Hi, Rao. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm also good. Okay, tell me about yourself. I'm more interested in your technical side. Okay, so I have around two years of experience at React. I have worked uh, majorly on the banking domain and then health domain as well. And in my uh, career, uh, along with React, I have used HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, Redux, and other supporting web uh, technologies. Okay, nice. In this interview, you have discussion over HTML. <coughs> JavaScript and React. After that, we have a coding round as well. So, shall we start? Yes, yeah, sure, please. What is DOM? Uh, DOM basically it's, it stands for Document Object Model, and uh, it is. Uh, you know, it's 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 just a structure of the page. It has different nodes and different elements. Yeah, that's that's what DOM is. What are the differences between absolute and relative positions? Uh, these two are basically your uh, CSS positions. Uh, absolute is when your element is placed absolutely. Uh, uh, so there should be a relative parent and to that uh, absolute element is placed that is absolute and relative uh, element is placed relatively to its uh, actual position so basically absolute element should have a relative parent element that is the main difference okay. Okay. what are closers in javascript Closers, uh, basically they are the functions which can access the parent uh, environment data. So let's say we have a function and there is some variable defined outside of that function. Then if uh, then the function can access that variable which is uh, outside of that function. So this is a closure. Mm -hmm. ES5 and ES6. ES5 uh, stands for ECMAScript 5 and ES6 uh, stands for ECMAScript 6. The main and the major differences are ES6 has uh, introduced new keywords, let and const. Previously in ES5, we only had the var keyword. And then ES6 has introduced arrow functions and restructuring as well. So these are the main features of ES6, which are really useful uh, while building the applications. Okay. What are different methods of array? Uh, there are so many uh, methods of array. There is filter, there is for each, there is map, reduce. Uh, these are the four methods which I use most of the times. Okay, now differentiate for each and map methods of array. Uh, map basically returns the value, whereas for each does not return anything. So these two methods works quite similarly, but the only difference is uh, what I told that map returns uh, the result or the value, whereas for each does not. Tell me which version of React you have used. I mostly use 16.8. Okay, which components are better? Class or functional and why? Functional components are much better than the class components because in functional components you can write cleaner code with the introduction of hooks. Uh, it allows us to write, uh, you know, uh, basically club the uh, similar code into a single hook. So for example, use effect hook 
provides us to write some uh, side effects, uh, not side effects, it is called side effects. And it, it mimics the component date mount, component date update, and component uh, will unmount. So you can club the logic for all these three lifecycle hooks into a single uh, hook. So that's why it is uh, better. And it's, it's, it's better to read the code as well with the functional components because they are so lighter than the class component. Use memo versus use callback. These two are the hooks of React which you can use on the functional component. Use memo uh, memoize the value. Uh, uh, basically, it keeps a track of the last computed value, and whenever the dependency uh, of its array changes, instead of recalculating the entire logic, it uh, returns the memoize value. And uh, use callback is, uh, so your functions which are passing to the child component are wrapped into use callback. With that, uh, it avoids a re-rendering. Okay, how to pass data from child to component? In child to parent uh, data passing is uh, most of the times it is tricky, but there are ways to do it. Like we can write callback and the parent component pass that to the child and whenever required we can pass the value back to the parent from child then we can create some ref or something but uh, the ideal way is to always pass the data from parent to child uh, wherever it makes sense so we should lift the state up to the parent component so that we do not need to pass this uh, data from child to parent application it totally depends on the use case so uh, let's say if you are using a list of items if you are entering list of item on the screen and it, it's a use list then it's better to use infinite scrolling uh, uh, instead of displaying all the items in a one go if you are using some image then get the image in low resolution uh, in the form of thumbnail and then whenever user clicks it get the actual image so that will uh, make it performant and also we can use lazy loading and functional components. What are different life cycle methods of React? So there are three phases basically uh, mounting, updating and unmounting. There we have constructor, then the render method, get right shit from probes, then component did mount, then component did update, should component update, get snapshot before update, and component will unmount. Define shape and context API and the uh, Retex is a state manager. It sits at the top of your application and knows, uh, knows a lot about your application state. Any component in the React can access the data from Redux via actions or reducers, or you can get a slice of uh, any state from the Redux because it has a single store. Context API uh, has two parts in it. One is the provider, and second is the consumer. We can provide the data at the top of the application, and then any uh, component which is a consumer can consume the data. Basically, it is used for the authentication purposes. What are actions and reducers in Redux? Actions are plain JavaScript object uh, which has a type of action and then some payload and reducers are the only way to update the store. Okay, now let's have a coding round also. Please open the code sandbox and share your screen. Okay. Uh, 
I'm opening the code sandbox. Just give me a minute. Let me store my name in a string called name. And I want to remove the duplicates from it. So I can use the set. Right. The duplicates are removed. Okay, I have shared your API link. Please open it and print the names of all users by using the app. I am sharing the link. I got the link. Let me open it. Okay, you want me to print the name uh, of all the users that's inside the company and then name. Okay, so let me create a sandbox for React first. State one is used effect. Now and then I'm going to state here. Initial value will be done, and also we could write input effect. I'm going to call the API I need Axios. Add dependency. And here I pass in the array so that it's, it gets called only first name. Yeah. I paste the API here. Let me get to here. But then response. And now whatever response I get, I will set that to the users. And in case of any error, I'll simply drop that out. And here, to print the data, I'm going to write it. But first of all, let's check what inside the. Let's here, I'm going to write users and users so this checks if users are present then let's not map user delete power def 
form dot user dot company dot name say syntax error and this will be token Line number 78 is saying some unexpected token expected. Come on. See the names of all the users. Okay, it was nice talking to you. I will share my feedback with HR and she will let you know. Okay, with that? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you. Bye.